I am so excited for you to listen to today's podcast. It was a very different podcast for me to record, but one which was so, it, it enlightened me to the determination and the fearlessness of the guest. It was Rachel who owns Cafe Number no. 47 and Rachel didn't know she was coming on the podcast until like 12 hours ago. I didn't know she was coming on. Um, it was a last minute, spur of the moment thing and in she came. I had no notes, no research, but Rachel really, I can't wait for you to hear it. She opened my eyes as to the um, the way someone can just have a dream and a vision and always has had that there, but something can just happen to make it come to life. And you'll hear in her in the podcast how she grabbed an opportunity that was offered to her, obviously with the support of her family, but she just went for it and she never let her dream or her vision be taken away. Even with COVID, she pivoted, she changed, she embraced the takeaway food element in her cafe and also her passion and her drive actually started to be noticed by other business owners and how she was kind of headhunted for a new premises and she's going to open a new cafe and all her plans for that. So, you know, I know that anyone who may be struggling with, you know, thinking how they're going to embrace the new um, business landscape that lies ahead, you're going to get so much inspiration from this and realize that you can do this if you have a dream and a vision. It can be done and she's just amazing. I can't wait for you to listen and yeah, let me know how you all find it and what's your key takeaway. The Dig Podcast is a podcast that focuses on business life and all things social media. It's a place of learning and one where you can take away actionable tips that you can put into practice straight away in your business. I hope it inspires you to reach your goals and never give up on that dream. Hello Rachel. Hi Caroline. Thank, Thank you so much. So what made you message last night? Well, um, I was just lying in bed actually, just put my kids to bed and um, I always follow your stories anyway and I'm massively a fan of what you're doing. Um, but uh, I just was, I saw that you were missing a guest and um, like I was saying earlier to you, I kind of feel like feel the fear and do it anyway type of a thing. Um, and I've never done a po podcast, I've never been a guest on a podcast or anything. So I just kind of thought, why not? If not, why not? Uh -huh. um, I've got a few things coming up that I kind of would like to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, well, it's a nice way for me to connect with you as well as let people on my page know what we're about to do. So okay, I thought I'd take so the that's, opportunity. Yeah, you're just right. And I suppose like you were saying to me last night whenever I said, yeah, that's it, <laughs> you come, you're like, oh God, I'm going to be sick. But everybody goes through that. Like I feel it too sometimes whenever I'm doing stuff. But as you say, you have to face the fear and do it anyway. Mm. So fair play. I'm delighted you're here. Thank you. Um, so Rita's actually from Donough Moor and I'm just from outside Cal Island and so very close. Um, and I do know of you, but I don't know anything about your story. Do you want to just tell us, like, I don't know where it starts or when it started or whatever, but you can tell us and then mm. I'll probably be able to know what my audience will want to know after that. But do you want to just yeah. dive right in? OK, um, I'm a bit like you in that um, I don't really know where it begins because it kind of goes back and forward a few times um, in terms of what my career path has been. Um, so I have worked in restaurants since I was 12 years old. Um, my first job was a dishwasher in a local restaurant. And I dipped out of, in and out of waitressing then for a long time. In fact, right up until I um, had my last baby, who's now three, um, I kind of was always in the restaurant and the hospitality industry, and I always had a real love for it. Um, sort of in that length of time, obviously I developed a love for it and a passion for food and that type of thing. So I'm working with the public. Um, I kind of had an inkling that I'd always like to have my own cafe or restaurant. Um, and as the years went on, that grew stronger and stronger. And um, I also then went into the arts. So I worked for a few community arts associations locally and um, always had an interest in the arts. So I suppose over time, that we inkling to have my own cafe never really left me, but I had a real interest in the arts. So um, I, I thought, well, there's so many talented people in our area, like it's just coming down with talent, um, that I thought, what, what about like the likes of an arts cafe? So why not have a cafe where you can show everyone's like local people's work and have the likes of musicians in and do different things within the cafe and that community environment and just kind of really focus on that. So um, like I say, it was a it was a bit of a pipe dream, really, because um, I had my first child whenever I was just 20. Um, I was in university actually studying media studies at the time. Right. And um, after first year, I left to have my son, Ross, who's nearly 18 now. Oh my so, God. I know. So um, well, he'll be 18 in October. 
Um, so I left university life at that stage and focused very much on just being his mummy for and a few years. How did that fate, just jumping in, like I obviously went to university, how did you feel, obviously you were excited about having your baby, but yeah. how did you feel about having to leave university, like when you're only a year in? Yeah, well it was quite daunting, like I had started a course previously and left it. Again, like I didn't really know what direction I wanted to go in, I kind of knew what I was interested in and what my experience was in but I wanted to try out new things. And like I say, I was always interested in the arts, so that's why I chose media studies when I did. Um, but it was to leave university after first year and to know that I wasn't gonna go back anytime soon, it was quite scary. Um, I was very much thrown at the deep end, obviously, at that age to, to go out and live on my own and to have my son and um, focus on raising him while I, I sort of find my way, you know, then back into the career path, I always knew that I wasn't done. I always knew that I was looking to work. I was always ambitious. I always knew that I wanted more um, for myself and for him to show him that you know that you can sort of get what you want. So um, like I say, I had him and eventually met my now husband um, and we've got two more children. But to go back to that, we um, I went back to university eventually and thought, I suppose three different life experiences. I had taken another bit of a fork in the road where I wanted to go down the counselling route. Okay. So I did a communications course, like a graduate certificate in Lockery College, which sort of set me up back into the whole education system again. Um, then I went to um, OMA and I did a degree in counselling for a few years um, and was about to launch my career in counselling. I had graduated uh, while I was pregnant with my third child and was about to start just after I had him um, into becoming a counsellor in my 30s. And lo and behold, this opportunity came up to open my own cafe. Right. So this dream that I'd kind of always had in the back of my head came to bite me at that time. And how did, how did that happen? Like, how did an opportunity like that happen? Well, did you seek funny, that out or did that, how does it land like that? It's funny how it worked because, um, like I say, like I'm born and raised in Donick Moor mm -hmm. and I know that there's just so much local talent around. So I kind of always had this hankering for the site that I now am in. The, the unit that I'm in, mm -hmm. um, in Donnockmore in the main street. And I know the family who own the building very well. I grew up with them. And I used to joke with my landlord now and say to him whenever he was running his news agents, you know, if you ever close this place, I'm, I'm coming in here and it's gonna be a cafe. And so it was a bit of a running joke between us anytime I was in the shop. Like I say, it was a pipe dream for me. So I never really thought it would ever happen. But um, just after I had Luke, my third child, um, I was actually on the street on my way to a different shop. Uh, that shop had closed and um, the landlord, he stopped me outside his shop um, as it was closed and said, there's your unit. He says, we've closed. You can have it now. And I looked at him and I says, he's joking me like I've just had a baby. Leave me alone. Uh -huh. Why is up? So I was totally going, no, no way. Also, I just qualified as a counsellor. I was going down that route. I was very serious about that. I loved it. Um, it's still something I'd like to use in the future. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of laughed at him and I thought, no, it's not going to happen. And I went down to my sister's house at, on that same day and I said, what do you hear? He's just said this to me and like he's mad. But my sister and her partner were looking at me and they were going, no, you're mad. You're crazy. You've always wanted to do this. Uh -huh. And I said, like, no, but sure, I'm just about to go into counselling. Like I've just had him a baby. My sister's wedding was in Italy that year too. So there was a lot going on at that time. And I thought, no, no, this is not the time for me to think about this, no. And um, my sister and her partner, Jim, um, and Jim, um, just said to me, look, lift the phone now or you're going to regret this. And I thought, oh, God, that's I am. That's right. Oh you're God. right. Yeah. So literally about half an hour later, I phoned um, Eamon, my landlord, and I said to him, Eamon, do you know that you said that to me in the street there? And I laughed. I said, actually, I am interested. And it's amazing how things work out or don't work out, because at that time he said, sorry, you've just missed it. <gasps> we've just been told that there's a person who's been interested in it is going to take it Stop. and they're going to turn it into a, like a coffee shop. So oh I was no, going, I feel good I for you. <laughs> so whenever I hung up the phone and I went back out, out the back garden to my sister and Jim and I said, it's gone. And they were like, you are a fool. You were handed that opportunity and you said, no, look what happened. Okay, no, but maybe God, you didn't have I much know. time to think about it. No, I didn't really at all. But I was, I was ringing just to sort of say I'm expressing an interest yes. and yes, you know, I might think about this, uh -huh. but I had missed the boat. So I was going, oh, no. And that's what made me realize I do I want, want this. this. So fast forward a couple of months. Um, as far as I was concerned, that was gone. And after I came back from Italy that summer, I was going to go into my counseling career. So that was my back on that track <laughs> again. 
Um, but so we went to um, our Liverpool, sorry for my sister's um, party in the March. And just as we landed off the airplane, um, I got a phone call from the landlord to say, do you know what, this has fallen through if you're still interested. So I was like, oh God, here this, here, <laughs> this is being handed to me again. Uh -huh. So um, I said, do you know what, I've just got off the plane to Liverpool. We're about to go on a hen weekend. So don't expect anything from me for a couple of days. Uh -huh. But yes, I am interested. And yes, I will talk to you when I get back. So um, when I came home, I put down my deposit and that was that. I said, hold it for me. While obviously, like at that time, I had no business plan done. I had no savings. You know, I had, we were about to go to Italy for my sister's wedding. So we put a lot of money and time and thought into that. It just graduated. I was a student for a few years. So it was very much like my husband was supporting us. So it was a time where I was going, right, where am I going to get the money to set this up? It was a, a blank canvas of a unit. It had been a shop. It wasn't fitted out for the kitchen or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it literally was starting from scratch with nothing. So how do you start? So, I'm listening to that going, well, how did the hell yeah. did you pull it together? Like I do, when you're talking now, I do know your yeah. cafe. I knew you anyway when you walked in and last night, I know your cafe, I've ate there before. I haven't experienced the art side of things mm -hmm. because of COVID and mm -hmm. all. And we'll talk about that after. But um, how did you get it to be the way it is then? What happened? Well, like, I'm very lucky in that my husband's a joiner. My father's really handy, like he's a <laughs> great painter. It, it, it has been a massive family effort and always was. And fa family and friends have been very good and very supportive. Um, like my friend, one of my friends in particular, Lana, she helped me write the business plan. I would have a lot of, in my head anyway, I think I have a lot of ideas and I've always been a bit of an ideas person, but never would have known how to go about writing a business plan. I still can't do an Excel spreadsheet, you know, for business I hear you. people, I hear you. I can't I either. <laughs> for business people to think you Lodi have to. can from being yeah. Productions. If anybody's listening, he's very good. I might have to get for him on board. <laughs> but like that's the type of thing that people think you might you might have to have to set up your own business. Yeah. So I didn't really have the basics of business skills. I didn't have, um, you know, I didn't have the finances for it. So my friend Lana helped me to do a business plan. We put it together again. I thought this is pan the sky. I've paid the deposit. If that falls through, I've, you know, I've lost a bit of money, but I, it mm -hmm. all's not lost. So I thought, right, we'll give it a go. And like I say, I know the family who own the building. So they were very patient and good to me and they kept, you know, the place for me. So away we went, wrote the business plan and applied to the bank for a loan. Um, I had a couple of family members who were really kind and offered me money and lent me money. Mm -hmm. And thankfully now I've got them paid back. But it, you know, it takes time and they mm -hmm. were very kind to do that. So it literally was a, you know, I went to my family and said, I'm thinking about doing this. And they were going, you're mad, but here's help. You know? <laughs> so they believed in you, but they were probably they just scared for well, maybe. I think they were sort of thinking, have you not just done a degree? Yeah. Have you not just gone down a different route? OK, this is interesting, but let's see where she'll go with this sort of thing. So um, they were very supportive and very good to me in loads of ways. And my family, like I say, them and my husband and his family were very good in supporting us with childcare, with um, even just physically coming in and helping us get the place set up. So we just, like I say, I've worked in the industry for so, so long mm -hmm. that I have quite a few contacts and people that I know that, you know, even the likes of my husband's friends who have worked for like big, uh, like catering supply and companies and stuff like that there, that I had lots of contacts that yeah. I used and just contacted people and said, look, here's, here's what I need and what do I need to do to get that? Yes. And luckily for me, I was very happy to get that guidance and there, we, we did it and um, with, like I say, that was in about March, went to Italy and... What year was that? That was in 2018. Okay. So my sister's wedding was in July in Italy. So we went from March to July, Italy, to home, to scramble, 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 till we opened in November okay. 18. So from the July, really, I suppose August maybe, to the November, we were waiting on the bank to get back to say had we got the loan. Um, scrambling around trying to get our contacts to get what we needed for actually fitting out a kitchen and getting the cafe fitted out. Um, but like I said, I knew enough people and I leaned in on that support and mm. um, we got there eventually. So it's called? It's called Cafe Number 47 and it's in the main street. And in is it Number 47 on that street? Is that why it's called that? It's, yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing more creative for the name. <laughs> and I did dabble with a few different names for different reasons, but um, Actually, again, a couple of friends says, why don't you think of 47? And I thought, you know, I have thought of that, but will I? And I went back to it in the end. And mm -hmm. I actually never regretted that. I like that name. And like, we've got a new restaurant opening very soon. Oh, right, okay. Kutztown as well. So it's um, number 47. It's going to be a restaurant as opposed to a cafe. Um, quite similar in style, quite similar in 
approach in you know what we do and we'll hold live music events and stuff like that in it as well so um, that again that was another lovely opportunity that came to me so okay so t <laughs> hold, don't tell us about that yet because I want to go back mm -hmm. to the cafe so did your dream of it being involved in the arts as well as being a cafe mm -hmm. I think that did happen yes. then oh yes um so definitely yeah so we, I contacted local artists before we opened um, again, like I said, there's such an abundance of talent um, of artists locally, thankfully for us. Um, and I know quite a few of them personally. So I just contacted them and I said, look, we're opening this cafe. I want to have the walls adorned with art by local people. So are you interested in giving me a few pieces? And since then, you know, we've been selling their art off the walls. A lot of it has just flown off. Um, Jim and his partner is actually an artist and he's now got his own gallery. He's a neighbour of ours now on the main street. But um, he has a few pieces in and you know people's works actually selling off our walls which is what I always wanted as well and it's that I'm just jumping in because I'm keen yeah. to know and maybe this is not information you share but is that a business thing as in well, do you make money off those being there or do they just buy it do okay, people buy well, it and it all goes to the artist is that something that helps your business as well no strictly speaking I am very much um, take hang your art in my walls you're doing me a favor because they've beautiful Lips. art on the walls okay that's deadly now, right okay I have I never ask for commission on yes. the art selling. Some artists volunteer. Yes. And yes. it's a small percentage. Yes. But it's still a lovely gesture. gesture of course. But I don't expect it okay. and I've never asked for so it. So that shows your love for what you're doing as well. Yeah. You're not doing well, it. Like, for I mean, local businesses as well who've done um, made their own products and their own, not necessarily art to hang in the walls, but their own products. Like I say, sorry for using that word again, but um, I'm quite happy to take them in. And if it's something that kind of ties in with our brand um, and it's not completely off the wall you know for us I'll certainly give them a platform to sell it and there's no reason why when my customers are in that they can't have a, a wee browse round and see what else they can have so um, like we can talk about that again too because obviously since lockdown happened last year we've gone down a slightly different route than what we offer right, um, so tell just we've about added on to that you see so so lockdown happened so you were going good we were going great so actually we opened in November 2018 and in September 2019, which was 10 months to the date mm -hmm. that we opened later, the Ulster Tatler Awards were on. Mm -hmm. And I got a letter in the post saying that I'd been nominated for one about a month beforehand in August. And I was like, what the heck has happened? Who's nominated us? We're only open. Uh -huh. What's going on? Um, it turned out my cousin had nominated us and then she had told a few of her friends and the nominations poured in. So I got a letter to say that I'd been nominated for this Ulster Tatler Coffee House of the Year Award. And I was like, right, okay. I'm getting shivers. Like, this that's is pretty it, big deal, like, yeah, after was, only 10 months. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing to get. And, you know, do you want to bring along a few staff members to come along to this awards ceremony, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, well, this is class. We'll go, definitely. It turned out that it was just me and my daddy and my husband went. And we had a fantastic, fantastic night. But um, the judges came out a few weeks before the actual ceremony and I met them. They were, you know, it was transparent that they were coming. I knew that they were coming. It wasn't like a mystery shopper idea yes. or anything. They came in and they had their lunch and they chatted to me about what we do. Um, so like, we, I'll kind of go back a wee bit. We do art, but we also have a folk club, which we do music, live music in the cafe once a month as well. So there was lots of strings to the bow for the cafe in that it was promoting local talent. It was a bit of a community hub for people. It was like, I'm a foodie as well. So it's like my mm -hmm. passions combined mm -hmm. with other local people's passions. And there's, there's sort of lots within that wee small cafe going on all the time. Uh -huh. So I um, chatted to the judges and away they went. So I knew who the other uh, shortlisted cafes were in, in Northern Ireland. So I just thought, well, that's fair enough. We'll have a night out. It'll be great. Yeah. So we're only open. And we went and we won. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. so I was, am getting wee goosebumps. It was myself. just that's absolutely brilliant. crazy. How did you feel? Like what? Oh, it was like an out-of-body experience. And like uh -huh. I'm sure, you know, yourself, you've won loads of awards. And it's no, just, no, stop, stop no, right like there. It is, it's just no, I just want to say, I like I, Rachel, was in business for 12 years in the shop. And I didn't win an award to, like until Hyronic, just before I closed. But mm -hmm. um, I know what that feels like to get you feel so proud oh it's just so lovely to be recognized on any level it's it is, lovely like, and because you know as well as i do how much hard work mm -hmm. goes on behind the scenes of running any business mm -hmm. um like i spoke to my husband recently and he's self-employed as well um but in a different industry and it's not like he owns a business of bricks and mortar that he's selling mm -hmm. stuff out of he's a joiner you know so um he gets that it's very stressful and there's there's a lot oh, that goes on behind the scenes but as i said to him it's it's so different to walking into a job and walking out of it again, knowing that you're getting your week's wages at the end mm -hmm. of it. 
there's just a whole other level of work mm. that goes into being. So it was just lovely to be recognised and to get. Like your daddy was so proud of you. Oh my <laughs> days! It was like the Oscars, oh, you know. He but was, it is like it the was in Saint Anne's Irish Cathedral. Oscars. It was, and it was just class. And um, yeah, so we were all the three of us were walking around that evening, just like high as kites. It was just amazing. It was mm. really brilliant. That's brilliant. So absolutely buzzing off that, and then um, then come March 2020. We won a second award, so we won that one in September 2019 for the Ulster Tatler. Then, say January, February, come round in 2020, we got another letter from the Restaurant Association of Ireland to say that we'd be nominated again for a similar category, Cafe of the Year, I think it was, um, in Tyrone. So, again, I was like, "Oh, here we go. This is <laughs> someone's having a laugh. You know, this uh -huh. is deadly." But loved it, loved every bit of it. Uh -huh. um, and we went to that awards, and again, we won. And that was just the week before lockdown. I have always wanted the Dig Podcast to be a place of learning and a place of inspiration. But I've also wanted it to be a place where businesses can gain exposure. That's why I'm so excited to open up the Dig Podcast to businesses and allow them to pitch their business. To you. Hello, uh, my name is Jim McKee and I'm an artist from County Tyrone. I'm very pleased to tell you that I've just recently opened my own art gallery, uh, the Jim McKee Art Gallery at uh, 45A Main Street, Donnock Moor, County Tyrone, uh, next door to Cafe Number 47. Uh, my business would be mostly oil paintings and uh, prints of my work. I have a, a large variety of prints of uh, all different topics uh, that, that can make a nice gift for uh, any occasion. I've also I sell cards and antiques, French antiques in my gallery. Um, I also take on commission work where I can personalise a piece of art for any occasion. Um, and uh, I can work with, with you, the customer, uh, to any budget uh, at any or any size. Um, you can buy my work online or you can call at the gallery. Um, my website is www.jimmckeyart.com. I'm also on all the social media platforms. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, Jimmy Key Art, or Jimmy Key Art Gallery, you'll get me. And if you want to make a, an appointment, or if you want to call to Donnick Moore and come into the gallery, you'd be very welcome. I'm here most days from around 10 o'clock in the morning onwards, and from 12 to 6 on a Sunday. Uh, my telephone number is 07845 969989. That's 07845 969989 if you want to... Uh, meet me at, at any time and um, also I've got an email address if you want to email me an idea or something is uh, jimmckee2012 at gmail.com I uh, look forward to hearing from you and thanks a million for taking the time more shivers and going down fact, our back lockdown yeah. word looming no, oh my sorry god sorry to even mention oh no we need to talk about it like that's what affected but so many but I remember the night of those awards we were actually People, it, there were big, big signs up all over the place saying, "Don't shake anyone's hands," you know. Oh, right, okay. And the the word was already out there that this was Come. quite dangerous, you yes. know. But everyone was kind of just laughing, going, uh. "That's a bit extreme," you know, that uh. you're not allowed to hug or you're not allowed to like shake hands, and and nobody took a heed of it. The, in my, from what I could see, yes. nobody really was about it. Nobody really realised. So what nobody was had a notion what was going on. Like I mean, I thought, okay, there's definitely something about to happen, but. It, nobody ever could have predicted mm. this you know mm -hmm. a year down the line and how bad things are still and how difficult it is still but at that time we just thought be grand a couple Aye. of weeks will be grand it'll be grand yeah. I know so again so um it was lovely that it happened just before lockdown we got to go to another awards ceremony the second time I took my um, sister and another one of our colleagues that a friend of ours that works in the cafe and um we three had a great night out too so that was that a week later Boom, close and then the whenever you heard, like everybody knows how they felt when they heard they had to close, but what did you think? Yeah, well, I remember me and the girls sitting around and it had gone quiet. Mm -hmm. The last, you know, the, the week or so before, this was all being the whispers were going around and people were going, what's going on? And I definitely felt a shift in the energy and a shift and change in the business, even how busy we were. Um, and I remember we were all just sitting at a very, what would have been a very busy time of the day when it was much quieter, sitting around the table having a coffee, mm -hmm. going, what's going on, girls? And we kind of joked, going, if I had to do two weeks in isolation with my kids, I don't know if I'd go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, <laughs> don't even go down that road. <laughs> so we all kind of had a bit of a joke about it, and we thought, again, like, OK, well, if we have to close, we have to close. And then, actually, um, so I, I realised, I suppose, on the Friday that that was it. We were going to have to close. So we closed on the Saturday. 
a lot of like I think in the area we were probably the first to close. Um, I just felt very uneasy about it. I felt like this is more serious now. There's talk of us closing. Okay, I'm pulling the pin mm -hmm. because I didn't really want anybody, any of the staff, to come in and get sick. Yeah. I was terrified of some of the customers coming in and getting sick from you know being in the cafe. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be encouraging people to come out of their houses whenever it was just the message was so strong. Mm -hmm. You know, stay at home. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I thought, okay, I'm just going to close before we were told to even mm -hmm. close. So I closed. The Saturday was our last day and. Um, we've obviously been allowed to reopen and do takeaways and different things since. So tell me about that. So I want to hear, right, so did you close, how, how long did it take you to like kind of change that mindset to take out food then? Because you didn't mm. do really... Well, no, we weren't allowed to do anything for oh, a long yes. time. Oh, right, okay, yeah. So for the first couple of months, we weren't allowed to do anything. It was May before we were allowed to offer takeaways. Okay. And um, we did, we went down that road. But in that couple of months time, um, I got into, suppose, survival mode where I just thought, right, well, I can't let this business fail. You know, I wanted to keep going. So we went down, I, I contacted, like I said, I'm, I love cafe culture. I love going in and out of cafes all over, wherever I go. Mm -hmm. It's a wee hobby of mine to go in and experience that, you know. So I have um, seen a lovely range of different products made all over Ireland that I thought if I ever was to go down this sort of food shop route, I'd like to source this stuff and sell it as retail products. So I thought, right, summer's around the corner, picnics. Um, local people are producing really good, high quality artisan food products. Get it in, sell it as takeaway options. Um, I got like the likes of giftware and stuff like that. So we kind of changed the business model a bit into being more of a, a shop and as well as a takeaway coffee shop. So you could order your breakfast or lunch and you could buy a jar of peanut butter or jam or mm -hmm. chutney or whatever it might be. Um, and like I said, we source really, really good high quality products as well. So I was really confident and really excited then to go down that route. Um, and so we offered that and that, that flew and pe beautiful picnic baskets that people are still buying. You know, when they come in, we're still stocking. Um, so there's things like that that I just thought, right, we're going to have to adapt here and change a wee bit, um, offering what we offer, but giving something a wee bit extra as well to sort of draw people in and show them that we're, we've got more to offer mm -hmm. here. While we can't have them in the place, we can certainly offer lovely things that will attract them still towards us. Yes. So um, that went really, really well. And um, the takeaways flew, thankfully, that time. And uh, again, then we were closed down pretty quickly <laughs> after that. We, um, we, when we went through into July and August, where it was eat out to help out for the month of August and then shut down again. I was eat out to help out. I'm interested to know, was, is that, was that a good thing? It was it was good, but it was a bit crazy to be honest. Yes. I think because um, it was I think it was at the time Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mm. limited our hours very much to the weekends. Um, in fact, I wasn't doing Mondays, Tuesdays, or Wednesdays at all. And it, my view was, look, I'm not gonna have the place completely bustling while this is all going on. So mm. I was quite cautious still about mm. the whole thing. But at the same time, obviously, I thought, well, this is too good of an opportunity yes. to totally turn down. Mm. So I thought, right, well, we were open Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll do Monday as well and see how it goes. So it was class. I mean, Mondays were absolutely crazy. There were people queued right up to the cross nearly, you know, to get in yeah. and get their takeaways or whatever, but um, or to get in, sorry, and sit yeah. down and eat. Um, so it was good, and I'm sure lots of businesses benefited mm. from it greatly. Mm -hmm. And I suppose at that stage, even we didn't think that it was going to keep going and going and going either. Oh, no. So, you know, had you been in the mind of opening, that would have been brilliant probably. But mm. um, I suppose I was just. I suppose one of the other reasons why I didn't do much more than, and even still I'm very, not doing very much in terms of takeout we're doing this weekend coming up, but um, we've done very random sort of sporadic weekends instead of committing ourselves to every weekend. And that's because, like I've told you already, I've got three kids. And I know that whenever we open our other restaurant, my life's going to go on its head very much. Mm -hmm. My life is going to be very, very, very busy. Mm -hmm. And I know what that feels like already to be constantly away and constantly mm -hmm. out of the house. So I thought, this is my opportunity to stay at home with my kids for a while. Mm -hmm. And I am really relishing that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like very reluctant to let it go, you know, mm -hmm. although I feel like torn because the business obviously is so important to me, but mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm just, I'm, I suppose I'm taking advantage of the fact yes. that we can stay at home with our kids at the minute, yeah. dip in and out of work as much as we want to. And as much as, you know, our cost, we, obviously we want our customers to know that we're still there and we still want to be there, yeah. but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be open and we'll be absolutely, hopefully, very busy.
in the mm. near future no, again. I'll so say you will, because everybody's going to be dying not to have to cook for themselves anymore. But <laughs> tell me now, then, like you said, you're going to open in Cookstown. What? How? How did that happen? Okay, in between so, you being at home isolating with your kids or being uh -huh. at home with your kids all the so time. So it's just, it's all picks and troughs. As yeah. you know, last year it was just one minute you were out and about, the next minute you were in the house, not leaving the house. But um, in July, whenever we were open, um, one of our regular customers and her husband and their kids had come in and did, we were just chatting away as we would do. And they started sort of quizzing me on when did you open and do you like it here? And do you like Donick Moore? And do you like this business and you know would you ever think of moving and I was sort of looking at them going why are you asking They're me this? sussing me out here. Why They're going I? So I was sort of thinking why are you asking this and um, you know Rachel uh, Kevin's wife just said Kevin just tell her you know going ahead just uh -huh. tell her so um, Kevin said look okay we're actually building a new restaurant brand new and uh, where it's going to be at Kilcrona Business Park in Cookstown we would like you to be our tenant and I thought, well, that's a huge privilege. Wow. But have you noticed what's going on? Like, oh, you, yes. uh, do you know that we're in the middle of this? Uh -huh. So uh, I was going, wow, this is amazing. Thank you so much for asking me. That's a huge privilege. Um, and, you know, we obviously talked about, you know, what would your involvement be? And they were like, no, no, we would just be your landlord as your landlord here is, you know, or any any landlord is. We would just be that uh -huh. as the role. We wouldn't be involved in any of it. So it would be what you're doing here, just over there as well. And did you ask them why they came to you? Like, what? Well, I, I did, of course, because uh -huh. I thought, well, there's so many fantastic businesses locally and there's yeah. so many brilliant like restaurants and cafes uh -huh. all around us. So I was really flattered and really curious mm -hmm. to know why us. And it was just his wife, Rachel. She had been a customer of ours through lockdown and doing takeaways and did a wee bit of catering for her at different times. And she bought a picnic basket off me and things uh -huh. like that. And I suppose you strike up a rapport with your customers and you just, you know, we got on very well. She's a lovely girl. So um, they just said that they liked, they, they live quite near us. Um, they live on the other side of Cookstown, I suppose. But um, they said that they felt like there was just something missing in the area that they would like. And what we did is what they would like to go to Cookstown for. Okay. So they felt like our menu and what we offered in terms of the art and the music and all those things, it was a bit unique. And they just thought, well, it's something different that maybe isn't necessarily there in Cookstown at the minute. And there's a niche mm -hmm. that, that you can fit into. Mm -hmm. So it, again, like I said, I was just so flattered and flabbergasted. Daddy happened to be sitting a couple of seats up from them at the time. And I, was, I remember trying to catch Daddy's eye, you know, and go, I need to talk to you. Aww. But I um, couldn't get his eye because <laughs> it was a Saturday and it was flat out busy. Uh -huh. So I walked outside. I didn't tell any, any of the girls. I didn't tell anybody. I walked outside and I rang Gavin, my husband. And I was like, right. This is the crack. And did you think I'm going to do this, or were you think at that time I was like, depending on what he says, yeah, yeah. obviously, and depending on like, if he laughs his head off and goes, that's deadly, but not a chance. How could you possibly? Yes, I was kind of on that wavelength yes. of uh -huh. that would have just confirmed it for me because uh -huh. I would have been like, yeah, absolutely, you're right, no way. So whenever I rang Gavin, I said, look, Rachel and Kevin have come in and have said this, and what do you think? What will I say? And he says, you'll get back in there and you'll say yes very no quickly. Way. Uh huh. And I said, like, Gavin, this is mad. Like, how can <laughs> I take this on? Like, you know how mental things like are uh -huh. at the minute anyway. So um, are, you, are you serious? Will I say yes? And he goes, get, get in there and say yes before they leave. So he I'm must doing, believe in you. Like, obviously, you uh -huh. obviously want your partner, your husband to believe in you. But like, he really must see that drive. Yeah. Or I think he does. Just in you. Yeah. No, he's really, really, really supportive and always has been. And... Um, like if anybody would ever say you can't do something, Gavin would say, well, why, why couldn't you? You uh -huh. know, of course you can. And like I'm quite similar to that too. I'm very much a believer in it doesn't matter what your background or your status or where uh -huh. you've come from or your name or whatever. There's no reason why anybody can't do what they want to do. And I, I firmly believe that no one's entitled to success, but I absolutely believe that everyone deserves success. Uh -huh. And if you work hard enough, you can get it. Uh -huh. And I feel like that's I, I never felt like I was coming from a place of entitlement with it. I knew I had to get my head down and work really, really hard. But we things just started to piece together and then it just came together. And like, you know, it's never easy. Uh -huh. It's never something that you sit down and go, right, that's it all done now. Yeah. I can just relax. I yeah. certainly hope it might get to that stage in a while. And no, I don't think it does. It, like, it might it, never. We were talking to, I was talking to a guest yeah. uh, um, earlier on the podcast and they said you're always in it. You're yeah. never there. You never reach uh, the and point. I think, I think that's, that's part of being an entrepreneur, I suppose. Or. Exactly. I think that's kind of part of it all as well. And I think if you do sit in your laurels, you're maybe letting 
the opportunities mm -hmm. or you know you're you're maybe just being a bit too comfortable mm -hmm. you know and i've been told that by some really successful business people mm -hmm. too that obviously it's the cliche of life begins at the end of your comfort zone just do it and mm -hmm. put yourself out there and if it doesn't work that's okay the worst thing that you can lose or the worst thing that can happen is that you lose a bit of money you lose a bit of pride mm -hmm. or dignity or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if you've had neither of those before, so what have you <laughs> So true. So where are you at now then? Um, so yeah, so uh, Rachel and Kevin, sorry, um, they asked me to take it on and I went back in and I said, yes. I said, I didn't say yes, absolutely, definitely, yes, yes okay. I said, just spoken to my husband and we're definitely interested. You know, we need to talk more about this. Mm -hmm. So at that time, the foundations were only down, the building hadn't even been started, but Kevin says, right, well, do you want to meet? I'll send you over the plans. Do you want to meet at, on site, you know, in a week or two whenever things start moving up a wee bit? So me and Gal went over and we chatted and we looked around and we thought, right, let's, let's do this. So we're at the stage now where the building's up. We were, we were hoping that it all had been well. We would have been open in November. Again, like it was kind of the two restaurants, two awards, two years kind of a uh -huh. thing that I was hoping to open on our second anniversary. Uh -huh. Um, obviously with lockdown that didn't happen and in hindsight that's not been a bad thing because the building itself could have been finished and we could have really ra raced and pushed to get it finished on our side as well but um, I think there's been decisions that I've made that have changed my mind on since then I'm really glad that I had that we would have extra time to mm -hmm. go do you know what we'll not do it that way we'll try it this way mm -hmm. and that's not to say that we're totally right because we'll know that when we get in and mm -hmm. we're, we're working in it we'll know whether or not it's you know, worked out or not, but um, I'm just grateful, kind of, for that extra bit of time. And so now, I suppose we're at the stage where we're we're at the interior stage of it, and um, we're hoping we're about six weeks out from being able to say if we're allowed, we'll open the doors. Ah. Uh -huh. So we're thinking of probably mid to the end of May, if if okay. possible. Um, and like I said, Donick Moore will hopefully open in the meantime. And now I want in my head, I'm thinking, how the hell are you going to do this now? How, uh -huh. you, where, how do you split yourself? Yes. You know, what are you well, doing? So what's your have, plan for managing that? Yeah, we have like, I've obviously been very, very much on the ground um, working in the cafe in Donnachmore and been, I suppose, the, the founder of it and the person whose um, ideas are, you know, the ones that make, I, I would put the menu together and stuff and things like that there were always, but I suppose I've got, the team that I have are the team that I've had from the start mm -hmm. and they're absolutely fantastic and in fact they keep me right you mm -hmm. know I might go in and say we'll try this out and they're always very open to trying new things but they know the place inside out yeah and like one of them is my sister one of them is my friend in fact they're all, the rest of the girls are all my friends mm -hmm. I've known them all for a long time so um I fully trust that they're going to take it on and we've had that chat you know like they I know that they love my business as much as I do or as much as they can mm -hmm. um and I fully trust that they're going to carry the can for me while I'm over in Cookstown setting it up. Yes. And I'm hoping that I'll just go over and do what I've done in Donick Moore, be very much on the ground with it to get it up and running. But again, I have a fantastic new chef who I fully trust already, who's going to be amazing at what she's doing. And it's just about building that team again and getting a team as robust and as brilliant and as interested and as enthusiastic as what I've got in Donick Moore so that hopefully in the future, I'm thinking around six months to a year down the line, I can be a foot in each, you know, and okay. sort of be the person who's on the outside, but overlooking both sides, if that makes sense. I don't know how that's going to work, Caroline. I don't but know. You but you have to have a plan for how you think it's going to work. And then you might have I, to step away at times or whatever. But yeah, I mean, to juggle that with the kids and to do, you know, to be in two places at once is, is going to be impossible. So it's about letting that go and mm -hmm. to me it is like another child you know it's like a, a mm -hmm. baby that you're going you know I'm not sure if I want to totally let go and obviously I won't totally let go I'll mm -hmm. be in Donick more too some of the week mm -hmm. but um obviously to get Cookstown to where I want it to be I'm gonna have to focus on it for a while so so whenever you're talking I don't all, I try not to in the podcast talk about me but I just think about me because I opened the the uh, website and up to me that was like a second shop and I had to stay in my office and yes. do it all the time. Yeah. And I struggled a lot with things not being done out on the shop floor the way I would do it. Yeah. Oh but gosh, they were still yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. And my customer was still getting a deadly service. But I used to crumble inside thinking, 
no, don't do yeah. it. That, don't do it like that, you know. Yeah. But it was done and it was grand. And yeah. it was gr so I had to learn, you know, that if it's done, that's good enough today. Absolutely. Otherwise, I got I think, myself in a state. I think you, know? you do have to let go of the control a wee bit. Yeah, and you that's do. Something like, when you have very, two things, you do. It's very hard to do because you know that you've got the standards that you want to meet all the time. And you never want that to be jeopardised, no matter who's in the floor, no matter who's doing the work. Yeah. You want everyone to be at the same level that you're at with it. And sometimes, actually, in my experience, what the girls are doing is, better. is probably much I more know, efficient than I the way know. I would do it. Or, control, just uh, but it is, it's in your own head, and I think mm. because you've created it, and like I say, I think for me, it's a massive learning curve to go, right, you know what, I'm going to let you do that your way. And then afterwards to go, that was a better way to do it I anyway. Know, you know, know. It's just so a learning it's just, curve, it's a control it? thing. I think. No, wait, it's going to work out fine. I yeah. can tell you, I've obviously got a good team, but you'll just be like me probably and have to pull yourself in whenever uh -huh. things maybe aren't the way you would have done it. But so... Like that's massive, but what you've went through <laughs> in the last three years and, and your business journey now, I suppose that people mm -hmm. are listening, that's a real fearless attitude that you have mm -hmm. that and the people will be facing a crossroads at the minute about maybe yeah. reopening again. Will I will I fight for this opportunity that I wanted before mm -hmm. lockdown and now it's still here and yeah. you're a prime example of how you should. Um but I always whenever we're on the podcast and I'm interested to know too, how do you embrace social media and I was talking about social media but how do you embrace social to grow your business or do you do you use it do you think it's mm -hmm. any good um because I've no research done I don't okay. know if you do or if you yeah. don't but what way do you look at social for your business is it as relevant when it's a smaller knit community where your yeah. community where your uh, customers are coming in anyway yeah well I actually love Instagram personally okay. for business I think it's great it's a great tool to let people know what kind of menu you've got on what kind of dishes you're doing from day to day I love food photography anyway. I think it's, it's some food photography is amazing. Not all of mine is, but I certainly try to make it as, as appealing as I can to my customers. But mm -hmm. um, I think it's fantastic for brand awareness. It's fantastic to let people know where you are. Um, I have gone, I have got into the car and driven to Greystones, to the Fat Fox and to the Happy Pear. I've driven to oh, Sligo. Happy Pear, uh -huh. no, is it good? That's class. I have always and the, wanted the, to go there. Their shelves are full of all the produce that we're now selling, you know, as yes. well as, you know, different places like that. and shells and sligo and strand hill so i wouldn't know about those places unless i had an instagram account and unless i was following people in the industry you know so i followed one person that might have led on to a cafe they'd been to that day and i'll follow them and then you know and i follow quite a lot of australian cafes as well for inspiration and mm -hmm. stuff so i that's what i'm interested in anyway yes. so for me it's like that's my instagram scrolling is yes. going through lots of things like that but also i would like people to organically find us in the same way so I think it's really useful too. Now, I'm not hugely confident yet in doing, you know, talking to the screen or anything mm -hmm. like that, but um, I love showcasing our place. I love showcasing our food. I love like writing up what we're doing and letting people know and engaging with your audience and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's as, it's as important now as engaging with your customer face to face. Mm -hmm. So I spend a lot of time, obviously, like I said, in the shop or in the cafe um, and I, I know a lot of our customers and know a lot of our suppliers. I think um, really developing your relationships with your customers, whether they're online or in face to face, is so important. Mm -hmm. And I know that the younger generation obviously are using it so much. Mm -hmm. And we're getting a lot of people in who are Instagram and their food or Instagram mm -hmm. their coffee from where, you know, our place and stuff. And that just then snowballs, hopefully. Mm -hmm. it's like we're quite young in our business and we don't have a huge following on Instagram or anything, but it's a nice following and the people mm. that are coming in are engaging with us on it. So So when you say not huge, what is not huge to you? What's on well, Instagram? Well, we just reached 4,000. That, but yesterday. right, we need to talk. That is huge. <laughs> I, I think it's fantastic. I did a I, happy dance yeah. yesterday when I saw that. I'm delighted Unreal. about it. Yeah. Fair play because 4,000 people is 4,000 eyeballs. Absolutely. On, like, my God. Like Yeah. No, for me, that's a huge yes. achievement. And I know Unreal. that. But I'm, I'm totally delighted about that for us because we are only a couple of years yeah. in. And we are in a small village mm -hmm. in the middle of Tyrone. You know, we're not in a city, mm -hmm. you know, and we don't have huge footfall through the village all the time. But I'm really proud of that. Yeah, I'm really unreal. proud that we've, we've developed that and grown that. And hopefully that'll just continue, as I say, organically to let people know where we are. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason for me using Instagram, because I want people to come to us no matter where they're from. Yes. You know, I want to attract people from all over. And one way to do that for free for is Instagram. Free. Like, what what is the vision for where you want to be in like say let's say five years um well in five years 
all being well. Yes. Uh, Donick Moore and Cookstown will both be really busy. Yes. Um, I don't know that, I would never say never to anything, really, in terms of growing and uh -huh. developing the business and the brand. Um, I used to work in a branding agency a long time ago and I've, I've got a bit of an interest in that side of things too and developing a brand as uh -huh. such. So um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't if the opportunity came around. Go on, say it. What go, are you going to say? <laughs> no, to, to, to open anywhere else, you okay. know, to, to do something. What about your own products? Like Again, yes. Well, we do, we do make quite a lot of our own things, like our own chutneys and our okay. own like, things like that. And are they and branded up as number They're not five? actually yet, okay. yet, but we did talk about that prior lockdown that was probably that would have been the next phase yes. of my business well, the um, it, was on the, it was on our business plan that we would go down that road yes. in our second year actually uh, so, I see that now, yeah. I don't mean to throw another banner in the works <laughs> well, you. don't tell me something else maybe, but that's when you're talking I'm like oh she needs her own branded chutneys you know, and you know I cheeses to, and I used to do um I used to do a lean meals business before okay um I, I call it Rachel's good food it only lasted a few months because I went off then to do my counseling and stuff but, yes um so that is something that I have thought about and that I'd like to do. And I'd love people to be buying our products off the yeah. shelves and even to be stocking shops and stuff like that. I mean, there's no limit on no, what, on your what website, you can do. Could people could be buying and no need to be getting a jar for being a production staff down exactly. here. Exactly, <laughs> you know, things like that. And like, you know yourself, we did the wee, um, I, I developed a, another wee sort of branch of the brand before Christmas thinking hampers would be a mm -hmm. good idea. So I called it, I've, it's still there, it's called Rachel's Fine Foods. I like that sort of idea of artisan food products that you can sell in a hamper and gift to someone mm -hmm. so whether you know oh my god whatever time it. of the you year have it is to do that. so it could I'll be our own stuff in it next yes. who knows at the moment it's it's fantastic products from all over ireland yes that i'm putting into it okay so and um, there's no reason why maybe i can't be if yours I, if i can sit back a wee bit and take a breath go on ring think. gavin there and see what it says <laughs> <laughs> People are like, no, yeah, okay, no, enough's that enough, enough's enough, enough's enough, calm down. Yeah. Um, oh, that's unreal, and it's so refreshing to hear, like, sometimes when I sit and listen, and then I think about my own story, I'm like, oh my God, I give up too soon. But then, you know, obviously everybody's situation is different, and mm -hmm. there were so many more challenges for me, but it's so refreshing to hear someone who didn't let that, like, you're only open and you had to close, but you started to think of all these new ways. And for somebody to come into your premises and, like, headhunt you and mm -hmm. tell you they want you, like, mm -hmm. it shows just how brilliant you are oh at gosh. what you do. But um, yeah, it's been so lovely to talk to you. Thank and you. Just so you know, but before we stop, the, the, there were many moments that I felt like giving up. Just so oh, you know. I know, I know. I and there were that. literally in the last few weeks, there have been many moments where I've thought, this is much bigger than I am and I can't cope with this. So mm -hmm. I have, although I'm keeping going and I am so driven and very, uh, very ambitious with mm -hmm. my brand and with what I do, um, I can fully understand why someone would say, do you know what, at the minute this is not working. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's also a wise decision mm -hmm. if it suits you mm -hmm. at the time. So there have been wobbles. I know. But we are at the moment, we're keeping going and we're hopeful, hopefully going to just keep going and going. So I know, I know. Mm -hmm. I feel like now you're like saying, because I was saying about my thing, but I know what you mean. And everybody, I suppose you just evaluate all the different things going on in your life and yeah. that's kind of why I had to make my decision but mm -hmm. I applaud yours that you well, are like you so thriving on and so where can if people are listening and they want to follow how your journey now goes where can they find you what's your social media handles and anywhere that they can contact you where where do you hang out okay so we're based in Donoghmore Main Street um it's number 47 our Instagram handle is at cafe number 47 so it's at cafe no 47 and we also have a Facebook page um, DM us anytime. I'm the one that manages both accounts, so yeah, I'm usually quite good at getting back to people and um, also pop in for a coffee anytime. Yes. And when Cookstown opens, we're going to be based in Kilcrona Business Park. Okay. You can't miss us. We're right at the very front of it, behind CDE, which is a huge office building. Um, you then come into Kilcrona Business Park. We're at the very front of it. It's a circular building, so you can't miss it. Um, it's on its own. It's not within units or anything. Mm -hmm. So. It's a standalone building, so yeah, pop in there too if you're on your way to Cookstown or if you're passing through. On rail, I definitely, definitely will. Thank you. And I'm sure those people who are listening will too, but thank you so much. Thank you for your late night text to, or <laughs> message to, um, me to say you would come. And um, I'm so excited to watch what happens now for number 47. Thank, thank you, you, Caroline. So much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to The Dig Podcast. If you missed anything, we've made some show notes with links and all the good stuff we've covered today. Also, don't forget to screenshot this episode and tag Dig for Success so we can reshare on our stories. So 
Remember to hit the subscribe button and I will see you all on the next episode.